The athletes training at this gym in Boca Raton, Florida, are some of the highest paid mixed martial arts or MMA fighters in the country. That's one of the top light heavyweights, Anthony Rumble Johnson, throwing kicks in the octagon. And former light heavyweight champion Sugar Rashad Evans in white, wrestling on the mat. Some of the pros in this room can make up to a million dollars in one fight. Oh, let's go, Mike, go! Take us out! Yeah. Their coach is four-time world kickboxing champion Henry Hooft. Good. But Henry doesn't just work out the pros. He also trains super rich MMA fans who are willing to pay big bucks to train with their heroes. Like Lex McMahon, a former venture capitalist turned sports agent. I probably am a little insane. Like you don't step into a cage even just for exercise if you're not a little off. Lex pays tens of thousands of dollars a year for private training sessions that have him striking and grappling alongside the superstars. A one-on-one -on -one session with Henry, like this one, can cost up to $1,000. And most people only last about 30 minutes during these high-intensity workouts. I'm ultimately willing to make the sacrifice in terms of paying the premium price because you get what you pay for. Which, for well-heeled MMA fans like Lex, means rubbing elbows with the athletes he reveres. It's expensive, but you got the best fighters in the world teaching you stuff. Henry's other private clients include former NFL star Ray Lewis and NBA player Chris Anderson. <laughs> Lex is addicted. He pays for this punishment once a week. It's better than going into a gym and pushing some weights or sitting on the elliptical. It may be a better workout, but let's not pull any punches. Very few people can afford to sweat like this. To call Tony Shoshani a Ferrari fanatic would be an understatement. Tony is a Beverly Hills-based real estate mogul who has owned 30 Ferraris in his lifetime, including his 2003 Enzo that can reach a top speed of 217 miles an hour. But as much as Tony loves driving it, he's decided to sell it, along with seven of his other Ferraris. I need to make room in the garage, to be honest, and to buy more. We're gonna set a record for this one. At the Gooding & Company auction here in Scottsdale, Arizona, Tony is relying on company president David Gooding to fetch top dollar for his Italian stallions. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for the first car from the Tony Shoshani collection. Tony's F40 went for over $1.5 million, while his F50 got a record $2.4 million. But the Enzo ended up sparking a bidding war between someone in the audience and a buyer on the phone. 2.55. Six. Sold your car, sir. The final price, over 2.8 mil. Going to the bidder present at the auction. We hit some records. The Enzo was unbelievable what we got for it. All in, Tony made close to seven and a half million bucks, leaving him plenty of cash to do some bidding himself on this one-of-a-kind coupe. 500 I made, 600 I made, 700 I made. It's not a Ferrari, but there is a connection. You see, the Roadster is made by Alfa Romeo, the company where Ferrari founder Enzo Ferrari started his career. Tony won the car, dropping $990,000 on it, knowing it'll take another quarter million to restore. As I was bidding, I was also negotiating with my restoration guy on what the total restoration number was gonna be. We got everything done in less than five minutes. I love buying, I love selling. I love driving. This is Billionaire's Row, a small strip of 57th Street in Manhattan that's become a super rich magnet. The price of a penthouse here at 157 broke a Big Apple record when it went for over $100 million. But the height of this giant tower is casting a huge shadow on its smaller neighbor across the street. You get to be on Billionaire's Row for a good deal. It's a steal, it's a steal of a deal. Of a deal. Yes. <laughs> Super brokers Ryan Serhant and Luis Ortiz, stars of Bravo's Million Dollar Listing New York series, believe this $15 million penthouse they're showing in the nearby Metropolitan Tower is a real bargain in this exclusive neighborhood. And they're doing everything they can to get the word out. 
Today, for instance, our penthouse tour is also being filmed by a crew shooting for their Bravo series. Can we show you the master? Let's go. The 3,800 square foot duplex unfolds over the 77th and 78th floor. So this is the master. I really do think this is the master bedroom, like in the world. The king size bed once had a stellar, unobstructed view of Central Park, but now, that giant new luxury tower across the street blocks a good chunk of it. If you want to get this much space across the street, you're going to pay double, if not triple. Honestly, I think it's the better view. Actually, we should raise the price. I think we should raise the price. Yeah. They are fantastical looking, sci-fi inspired, and these one-of-a-kind watches almost always cause strong reactions. Oh my gosh, what the hell is that? But that's normal because art has to create emotion. And what we do is so outside the realm of normal watchmaking that most people feel it's an aggression. The very talented aggressor here is Maximilian Boozer. Max is the horological maverick behind his namesake brand, MBNF. The F stands for friends, a hat tip to a team of about 20 artisans who bring his novel ideas to life. It takes between three years of engineering, 18 months of handcrafting, a month for a master watchmaker to assemble one of our pieces. I have ideas today which will only come out in 2022 to 24. The decade-old company only releases four or five new designs a year, and Max always keeps production limited. He built just 50 of what he calls the Legacy Machine Perpetual, a mesmerizing construction of 581 components that also power a perpetual calendar. This Platinum Edition costs $176,000. Max recently launched the $230,000 Space Pirate, inspired by a Japanese anime series he watched as a kid. He'll make only 100 of these over four years. The watch is wrapped in an aeronautic grade titanium shell that can withstand temperatures of up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. There are 68 jewels, including 10 sapphire domes. And two of those crystal spheres show the hour and the minutes. This is probably the most amazing of the pieces we've ever done. Although Max says his wild watches are extremely precise, he knows that's hardly the reason they sell for big bucks. Telling the time is an added bonus. This chrome plating shop in an industrial suburb of Montreal is working on a very unusual and super expensive project. Coming out of this dangerously hot solution with a shiny new 24 karat gold coating is a face mask that will be mounted on one of the most expensive football helmets ever made. We wanted to go crazy on the helmet and just put all the wildest thing we could imagine onto the helmet. Originally targeted for the sports collector who has everything, this crazy concept was hatched by Andy Chung, and his limited run of bedazzled headgear comes with a hefty price tag. It starts at $12,000, and that is with 1.5 carats of diamond and a 24 pure gold-plated face mask. If the client wants more extravagance, it could go from $12,000 to $20,000 to $500,000. Interestingly, Andy's over-the-top helmets have actually made their biggest impact overseas with rich fans of all things American. We thought that the appealing market would be American males that love sports, that have man caves. Surprisingly, it was Asia that responded, specifically China. Asia has that kind of, if I can buy it, I will, and if I can flaunt it, I will. While this mask gets a gold job, Across town, an artist hand paints the shell, and a local jeweler provides the precious stones. We can go as wild as you want. We can have real sapphires and real rubies and emeralds. Because this is Canada, Armory also sells ice-covered hockey masks. And next, they're planning a line of ridiculously expensive NASCAR helmets. We love art, we love jewelry, we love diamonds, we love sports. Why not combine them all into one item?